However, the Greco-Roman athletes that transferred to MMA seem to have done better than the freestyle athletes. And I could name for you world and Olympic champions. I, I'll name drop here from Kevin Jackson, the Kenny Mondays, the Kerry Kolots of the world. For some reason, the freestyle guys that were the top tier athlete of the sport of wrestling did not go as far as the Dan Hendersons or the Randy Coutures or the Matt Lindlands, uh, by example, some of these Greco-Roman guys. Um, the question is why? that, And I've thought of it as well. And guy, I'm down to one simple thing, which is the posture. The posture of a Greco-Roman match is straight up and down. You are not bent over at the back. You do not bend your knees. You do not put your head down. You are straight up and down. When you walk into your opponent, you remain straight up, uh, straight up and down, and then you compete from a straight up and down position. A little bit of a broad stroke that's straight up and down, but you get my, but you're standing up, leading with your chest, head up at all times, hips in. That's what an MMA fight looks like. That's how an MMA fight starts, and there seems to be something, and don't forget, wrestlers have done so well in MMA, but wrestling doesn't dominate MMA. That is not true. That was true, but you got to go back decades for that to be an accurate statement that went away hi this is shady and today i'm going to be talking about judo's posture um this is something that's very important the shizentai the upright posture um the judo you know uh, regress when they ban the leg grabs uh, is it good for self-defense in terms of posture for mma etc there is just so much context that we can put judo in and see whether it is uh, effective or it has its drawbacks now no martial art is perfect every martial art has its drawbacks but i'm gonna talk particularly about the posture today and uh, also talk about is judo now like completely defenseless uh, if someone shot on the legs or performed a lower body attack um, like say going up against a wrestler i'm gonna talk about all these scenarios using uh, the great masters or the minds of the veterans uh, in order to you know form an opinion so as you heard change sudden about the mma thing you can see that going in you need an upright posture so uh, let's talk about self-defense for an instant so uh, this is from the book mind over muscle um, the writings of jigoro kano the founder of judo himself so this is from the chapter randori practice he says if one fights in earnest a stance in which your lower you lower your hips spread your legs and tilt your head forward is extremely disadvantageous both your face and your chest are vulnerable to your opponent's atemi it is difficult for you to move quickly to fend off your opponent's attack atemi is not used in everyday randori practice only because it is dangerous but you must nevertheless practice with the expectation that your opponent may attack using atemi or strikes at any time end quote so here he is explaining that having an upright posture would uh, protect your head basically and your chest from incoming attacks because your balance is not tilted forward and you can move quickly and you're not isolating your head and your chest for your opponent for them to strike you uh, with them so I would have to agree with him it makes logical sense as Chael Sonnen said even though he's a freestyle wrestler he said that the Greco-Romans they would enter into MMA with an upright posture and that gave them a lot of success because they're used to it because when you first go into a fight whether it's MMA or a street fight striking is there and you don't want to be in a bent over uh, posture so he did not say that you should not never bend or drop down obviously even Kano dropped down for a fireman's carry or a kata guruma, but he says that it should be done briefly, according to the book, and done at the right timing. So um, he's not against lower body attacks. Keep in mind, Kano was alive when double legs and single legs were done in judo, uh, or leg grabs were done in judo, but he would go for them very briefly, but everything else he would keep a very upright posture because you should always keep self-defense in mind according to Kano and I agree with him 100% and um, this is the thing when it comes to self-defense I'm not saying wrestling is worthless when it comes to self-defense just google or go on YouTube see their self-defense videos or their street fight videos and you can see wrestlers 
doing very well. It's a beast of a martial art, but even wrestlers know that if a fight starts, they're not gonna just bend over like they would because the other guy is not a wrestler and they're not going for their legs. They're gonna basically punch them or throw a haymaker, but at the right time, as Kano said, they will attack with the double or the single. So when it comes to self-defense, Judo's upright posture or the Shizen Tai is 100% legit. Now, let's go to the recent argument of the last decade, and that is with the leg grab ban, Judo is now completely defenseless against lower body attacks, and also um, it has regressed. And if they go up against like BJJ or uh, wrestlers, they're gonna be like a deer caught in the headlights. Um, now, I understand this. I was, I myself thought of this, but if you think about it, and this is according to my newest experience now that I've got back on the mats, uh, the whole thing with the sprawling or the hip defense is because your opponent changed their direction. It doesn't matter if they're grabbing you from the upper body, as you see here, or they're grabbing your legs. It's the drop of the level that matters and the defense with the hips. Now, I want to show you something, and that is sprawling or hip defense is not dead from judo it is still very much there but it's not for the purpose of defending doubles and singles so here you see this is mark housing uh, olympic champion he's explained he was the king of the kataguruma or the fireman scary he would grab the leg and everything but here he's explaining that for the new rules this is what you do uh you grab as long as the sleeve is tied to your um, the axis of your shoulder you can still do the throw he's explaining here this is from fighting films um, tutorials but here he explains what you do against a sprawl or a defense so here he goes for it the guy sprawls and then because you have upper body control you do a crocodile roll so are, you are still able to score a point or a wazari but nonetheless as you see here sprawling is still done it is because you're defending someone's drop of level and not doubles and singles this is what we need to keep uh, in mind um, you have to be sprawling or hip defense as neil adams call it is done because someone changed their level against you and this is not gone from judo now not to brag but i recently got back to the mats it was a bjj open mat and i went up against a guy who was my level of training and because I had an upright posture, he shot for my legs a double. I instinctively sprawled. I lowered my hips, grabbed his upper body, and then I took advantage of his uh, uh, compromised posture, and I was able to eventually get the tap. Now, when it comes to the bigger guys, they were able to pick my knee, but I lowered my hips. I tried to dominate the gripping because that's also a very important aspect. It's the grips. If you control the grips, the sleeves, etc., it's very hard for them to shoot on you, whether it's on the streets or if the wrestler is wearing a uh, jacket or if it's a BJJ guy. Uh, but nonetheless, I was able to defend. That's the moral of the story. It's because I was defending for a long time against Serenage and Drop Kata Guruma. So it's not completely gone they're not completely defenseless and again i understand these are bjj guys and they're not wrestlers but uh, and their attack is not elite because that's not their priority but nonetheless i was able to defend so this is something that we need to get straight and that is you know judokas did not lose completely the defense obviously did it regress Ob yes and i am a proponent of bringing leg grabs back in a particular context i don't know what that is but finally you know when it comes to judoka against a very good wrestler it's very nuanced uh, jacket or no jacket so i'm gonna leave neil adams to discuss it and talks about his uh, arguments also the argument i i find it it's a bit of a solid one uh it's that you know you you know you are a very good above the belt but when when you know, I say you go up against a wrestler in a you know open grappling match, like you're gonna be startled. You're not gonna defend your lower half, and also you don't even know how to attack the lower half anymore. Well, I I uh, I was in the eighties, so um, actually, what I when when I was five, fought lots of the wrestlers all the time, fighting wrestlers. Uh, my defense came from the hips 
and it came from posture and from my kumakata, from my gripping. Uh, and, and the point is, is that if you have a situation where you've got wrestler against uh, judoka, open match, as yeah. you've just said, the difference is, is that if you put a jacket on the wrestler and the judoka, you will have a different outcome than if you take the jackets off. Yeah. Um, I wrestled with a very good friend of mine called Noel Loban, who went to the 84 games. He was third place in the 84 games. And um, uh, so he wanted to put a jacket on me for uh, uh, judo, And I just gripped him so that he couldn't attack yeah. uh, because of the kumakata of, of the judogi. When we took the jackets off, he mauled me, you know, he just was all over me, you know, in a different yeah. way. And I had to adapt. But like I said to you, and we talked about it earlier, I adapted very, very quickly. And my wrestling game went up, you know, uh, uh, considerably within the, you know, the five, seven minutes that we were fighting. Uh, but he was, he was literally all over me you know so it's all about adapting to certain situations and um so for example if if i know that i've got uh somebody with a, an amazing single leg uh or a, an amazing double leg you know then i will just make sure that i have a little bit more distance you know so uh the tactics comes into play and it depends. The other thing, of course, it depends on what rules you're playing, whether you're playing wrestling rules or, yeah. or judo rules. Do you, 